podcast my name's rob howard and today i'm joined by marcus hurley first thing i would like to mention is that um it is award season yeah. it's been slightly delayed because covid obviously um but yeah we we had the baftas the other week and also it's the oscars tonight oh blimey so i just kind of wanted to take your temperature really on like what you think about if you have you, have you got any thoughts on I, any of these films that are I really I really haven't it sounds really bad because normally I kind of take a peek at least but it completely I mean I saw a couple of reports that the BAFTAs had happened and stuff like that but it completely sideswiped to me that um, it was that whole time already because I always I always think it's coming up to around the start of summer um, when all that kind of kicks off but apparently not um Mainly because we always did the summer movie wager sort of thing. And it, you know, related to that, I always heard in the back of my mind. So, um, long story short. I guess we're, we're no. just very out of sync, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Like, the world has yeah, been fast and, and we're all recovering. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it, it did get delayed. It's normally, yeah, because it was, it's normally like February time that this happens. So mm. they sort of like delayed it a bit, but they kind of had to put some something in there. I wonder if this will just shift it now forever um, or they'll just reset it again. But uh, yeah, I mean, I'm just look, having a quick look at the, uh, the the BAFTA winners, most of these have all come out on Netflix or Amazon or uh, Disney Plus. Hmm. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, I mean, probably the one that uh, I think is probably top of the pack really and a film that I saw quite recently is Promising Young Woman. Um, which is all about uh, this basically um, this girl who's kind of on a bit of a revenge trip, played by Carrie Mulligan. And uh, basically, uh, yeah, she's kind of like, she kind of like this girl who like just goes to all these clubs, pretends she's drunk, uh, gets guys to take her home, and then basically puts them in a very compromising situation. Uh, which they don't get into too much detail in, but you could, she's basically like sort of, it's like reverse date rape. That's weird because do you remember I told you there was a film with, um, Henry Cavill where he was just playing like a cop, cop dad. And it had, um, uh, what's his name? Who plays, um, who plays, he's in Iron Man 3 and he was in, um, super, he plays a terrorist, Amanda, the Mandarin guy. Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley. Ben Kingsley and, and Harry Cavill were in a film that I saw on Netflix. And they were doing a very similar thing to start off with. He was playing a dad and this girl was going up to people and sort of, you know, but it was more of a less of a date rapey type thing and like a, you know, you're a very bad stroke paedophilic person, change your ways and pay this money into this account or we snip it off. <laughs> um, sorry, it just reminded me of that in a weird way. But all right, well, there were no Oscars for, for that though no. uh, nomination. Uh, but yeah, I guess it's a similar idea. But yeah, no, uh, yeah, it's 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 really really amazing actually. That it's it's all uh, it's directed and written by Emerald F- Fennell, who plays uh, Camilla in in um, the Crown. Okay, yeah. Uh, so I found that quite surprising. But yeah, it's, it's very uncompromising. Uh, it's a film with an axe to grind uh, and a point to make, and it makes it very well. Nice. Uh, so yeah, hopefully uh, that actually won uh, Outstanding British Film uh, at the BAFTAs and is up for Best Picture at the Oscars. It probably won't win because No Mad Land will. That's got all the hype behind it. I haven't seen that. I don't think no. it's out yet. Uh, it's Frances McDormand. I think she won Best Actress as well for it. Oh, well. One of them. Uh, yeah. But yeah, 
I was glad to see another round. One, best film not in an English language. That that was my personal favourite film that I saw last year, although as far as like technically uh it's 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 actually a film of this year. Hmm. Yeah, I think I heard uh, that a lot of these films we won't have actually seen yet. Like, um, I think The Father, Anthony Hopkins is one and stuff like that. A lot of them haven't actually been released. Um, I think I saw in a report. Yeah, um, I don't think it has come out yet either. Uh, yeah, no, that's... Um, oh, right, hang on. Yeah, it, I don't even know what the UK release date is for that. Oh, <laughs> 26th of March. Oh, that, no, that was a film festival. It's coming out here on the 11th of June. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that, that was like my only really dip in. A... Yeah, that was my only dip into the BAFTAs, like sort of following a, a report on it and how Anthony Hopkins was painting at the time in Wales when he found out he won. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, no, I think I think that's fair. Like, I mean, normally there's like a little bit of a lag, but yeah, I think it's a bit more pronounced this year simply because a lot of these films, after getting the hype they have it, uh, on the award circuit, they'll be wanting to actually try and get a cinema release for them. Mm. Promising Young Woman went straight out on Sky Cinema. So oh, wow. uh, that's how I watched it. Um, also, uh, Sound of Metal, which stars uh, Riz Ahmed as a, uh, as a rock drummer who basically starts to lose his hearing, that went straight on Amazon the other week, uh, which is yeah. amazing. Um so yeah, it's, I was quite. It was quite overwhelmed actually because I was. I, I was expecting. I heard that was going to be coming out for like the cinemas opening, but mm. they just dumped it out on there because I, I think it was Amazon made that film. Like they were the. Yeah, okay. So that's definitely worth checking out, though, man. Like that got best uh, sound, best editing, and best sound. Okay. Uh-huh. Um, at the Baftas, uh, and it's because they do a really good job because he gets like in the film he gets bit of a spoiler but in the film he, he's so determined because basically what happens is he loses his hearing and he goes up and meet goes to this sort of like commune where they're where he sort of is there to sort of just adapt to mm. a new way of life yeah but he's sort of in the end he's kind of fighting this sort of argument with himself about whether to accept that way of life or fight against it to uh get claim his uh, his old life back and so it's all a bit it's all it's very well done i mean i think he's up for best actor as well mm. um but yeah the when he gets the implants fitted it's horrible because it, he's just all the noise yeah and there's no like filter it's like he's just oh, had a yeah. fucking horrible like everything's just compressed at the same level yeah. it's awful so uh yeah but that's like the alternative to just accepting <laughs> uh that he's deaf and Getting all the support he needs from the group he joined, but yes, yeah, it's 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 a, it's a really good film. Um, yeah, which was a long time coming, I think. Uh, it was, it, yeah, they made it like two years ago because oh, of COVID everything. They were just trying to put it out, but yeah, um, I might check that yeah. out. Actually, that sounds quite good. Yeah, I did think I, I think I did see that come up on Amazon because uh, I was watching a couple of other things that come up. It's got it's got like a. A black sort of car, doesn't it? Yeah, I'm seeing the thumbnail. Yeah, yeah, that's the yeah, one I yeah. saw. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. totally there, man. Like you should just check it out. It's like, yeah, will do. Um, yeah, Mank. I saw that's all about the making of. Um, uh, oh God, what's that film? Citizen Kane. Yeah, that's like the making of, or like all about the writer. That's like Gary Oldman. He's he's all right in it, but it's they, directed by David Fincher. Um, you know, it's all this is all like awards caliber stuff, but I think yeah. a lot of it's going on Netflix or it's on Amazon. I mean, Soul, did you see that? That's on Disney Plus. I haven't seen that yet. No, um, it's just time in it. But yeah, it's on the list yeah. of things to watch. Yeah, it's totally there. It's not even like a premium one. You can no. just watch it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah, Oct- my octopus teacher. I can't watch watch that because octopuses freak me out too much. <laughs> Really? So, uh, is it like yeah, post old I'll boy pass. or something? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It's just some documentary, like about like the intelligence of the creatures and stuff. I mean, I'm sure oh, it's yeah. great, but they just creep me out too much. So, uh. Yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's just a, I guess, a, a brief sort of look at all the uh, all the Baftas and stuff, and all of the all of the free 
movies you can well free in a sense all the different movies you can watch on on the various streaming platforms mm. they've been forced to come out on and it, but there's just one more film i wanted to mention that's kind of come out amin- amongst all this but isn't really up for any of these oscars or, yeah. or, or awards sorry and that's palm springs oh, which okay. uh, i thought was amazing uh this stars andy sandberg and christian milotti uh as to, as a couple of people who are in this sort of time loop situation. Oh, That's, I've seen that. It's the very Miami looking, sort of, not seen it, but I've seen the trailer for it. But at one point, they're like flying a plane or something like that as well. And I think they were flying a plane. And it, it looks like it's set have. in a kind of Miami hotel sort of. It's not Miami. It's the other side, mate. Okay. It's Palm Springs. Yeah. But it looked, yeah. I was just going with that sort of. You know, the atypical sort of American hotel with a pool and stuff like that, the apartment complex sort of. um. Yeah, I'm I'm being very particular about this because I've actually been to a wedding in Palm Springs. (laughs) And it's, which, I I don't know, that that attracted me to this film when I first heard about it. Oh, man. Um, Yeah, but basically, so, so but the, 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 the gimmick with this one is that, um, he gets stuck in this time loop and she gets sucked into it as well. Um, and also J.K. Simmons plays uh, Roy and he's just this total like nutter who turns up like some end of some video game boss. Yeah. But uh, but the thing is, because the concept is like uh, you're repeating the same day over and over, um, you still wake up in the same place. So it sometimes takes Roy a long time to catch up with them because uh, he wakes up in, like, New Orleans or wherever. wherever. Mm. <laughs> he has to travel all the way to find them. Oh, bloody hell. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's a um, really, really, really cool movie. Uh, very fun. You know, Andy Samberg's always good value if yeah. you watch Brooklyn Nine-Nine and stuff. Um, and it definitely captures that sort of, like, West Coast vibe um, and that sort of glamorous sort of, but quite sort of, I guess, a bit grungy type of vibe that that yeah. place has. Um, and it go, and it takes some really interesting twists and turns. It's, it is kind of like a Black Mirror episode mm. um, in a way, but they, 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 they do some very, so, you know, because the concept, you could easily say, oh, it's Groundhog Day ripoff. But they they uh, they really uh, do something interesting with it, you know. Yeah, so, uh, it's definitely one of my uh, favorite films I've seen this year. I would say. But that's the thing; like, I don't think of that as a negative thing anymore. Um, well, it's like the Happy Death Day. I thought that was a a scream version of um, Groundhog Day, and you kind of think, yeah, it was a bit of a rip off. But I quite like the way that they used that to try and solve her own. You've seen it, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's almost like a genre of its own. Now, yeah, exactly. It's and then Happy Death Day two. Have you seen the sequel to that? Uh, no, I don't. The think sequel so. gets even more crazier. It it kind of becomes a bit like, without going into spoilers, Back to the Future and Back to the Future Two. Um, so it's it it kind of then doubles down on the kind of I'd say clever because it's still a slasher movie. But, um, yeah, it kind of uses that in a way as well and kind of almost goes in on itself a little bit. So I, I quite like the idea of using time as a way to build tension because, like, the person needs to get through certain things and stuff and, and then some of the bits that were, like, the main part of it and you're kind of looking for something just get trivialised as you're trying to get past it. And it's almost like that video game mentality where it's like, okay, I've done the first part of this level, you know, um, I know this, I know that, I've learned the movements, I've learned the patterns, I'm going on and on and on and on, what's the next bit? And then something will get you, hit you from sideways and you're like, oh my God. So I quite yeah. like that because it's a different way of appreciating a film because you don't know what's coming next and, and just seeing some of the bits like looping over and over again and sometimes they'll play off it and change it and be at different angles and stuff. Um, I don't know, I just find, I just find that kind of style, that genre a bit enjoyable. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's almost like, you know, uh, it always reminds me of the saying, like the definition of insanity is yes. uh, is to yeah. keep doing the same thing and expecting a different result. Yeah. Whereas yeah, these are so. very much going against that grain. And the whole point is to try and beat the insanity of it all. 
um, yeah. by doing just that. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely recommend Palm Springs. It's it's cool. uh, yeah. very good value. All right, before we get to the main event, uh, you've seen... Uh, I've seen Godzilla vs. Kong. Um, very much... I'd say very much the silliest version of a film, which is saying something because it's giant monsters destroying yeah. stuff and minimal plot and everything. Um, it makes me laugh because you still get the same things come up again. And it kind of makes me laugh when I see people try to justify these films and trying to give them more depth. And they, I mean, they, they've got us, these films always have a certain amount of depth to keep you grounded in the world. But, at the end of the day, they're Godzilla films. <laughs> you yeah. know, you've got a giant radioactive mutated lizard that can blast atomic breath. Um, in the previous film, he got revived and boosted by letting off a thermonuclear device as he slept and tried to recover. Um, <laughs> when you go, if you're going from there and expecting things grounded in some sort of reality, I think you're watching the wrong film. So it was interesting. Um, going away from all of that, I gotta say, I really enjoyed it. Um, it's, it is, a lot of people might say it's crap and you'll probably get a lot of opinions on it and stuff, but I just think for putting together a Western version of a Godzilla franchise, they're doing really well and they didn't, no spoilers, but they didn't need to kill off Kong either to do that. Kong can return, but Kong is also safely tucked out of the way. So the Godzilla films can carry on without going, but hang on, hasn't Kong got to come in and help as well because something's going on in the world? Um, so they kind of address that and they kind of leave that in the way that you can continue making genuine Godzilla films, um, without that. And you could get on with making Kong films as well. Um, but the way that they handled it, the way they handled the fight, it was very much like the memes with the Batman v Superman meme. Uh, you know. <laughs> or, you know, do you bleed? And it's like, you know, one of them, one of the memes was, you know, you weren't even a, you were, you were just a monkey. It's like, <laughs> leave the king at the door or something like that. Basically, one on one, it's, the setups are really good. I thought, the plot was just as, I don't want to say farcical because it sounds derogative, but they're just as vehicles needed to move the set pieces along, which monster films tend to be because you have to think of these as disaster films rather than actual films. You know, yeah. the people go from area to area in order for the next thing to kind of happen. And the only part of any of these films that kind of had a grounding was in the first film, where you had Brian Cranston um, and the whole heartache he was going For through about trying half an e hour. exactly, exactly. But then I think you have to remember we're not watching Brian Cranston's Godzilla, which is why he had to go, unfortunately. But I think that set up a false president because he was too good for the film. Um, yeah, I think the problem with that first Godzilla film was that they needed to just accept that. The uh, the human characters were just completely pointless, and yeah, I think, I think it they're took there a lot to bear to... witness. <laughs> yeah, they're there to basically bear witness and to enable things to happen to then cause another incident to occur. So you know, you get you 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 get your moments of peril and everything else. Otherwise, it's just what happens in this because um, it's not a massive spoiler, but basically. The, the last, the first fight between Godzilla and Kong, you see it in the trailer, happens at sea. Godzilla's clearly got the advantage. Yeah, I just saw a bit of that. It looks yeah. absolutely crazy. It's bonkers. It's brilliant. You, I tell you what, if you grab a beer and sit down and just watch it, you'll monsters beating the shit out of each other and humans just trying not to get murdered. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and... <laughs> it looks great and I'd like to see that other Godzilla film, but I'm just in no hurry. I'm yeah. waiting for it all the to second be like one, just The second on, one like, is actually stream. quite enjoyable. I, I, if they, I, I'm looking forward to when things open up and the Prince Charles Theatre do like a marathon because I would love to go and see all of these again in cinema. Yeah, I think, I think there might be a demand for that, you know, like all these films that have been having li these very compromised releases. Because I think, yeah, I think that's the thing. If, if, if Godzilla v Kong was on at the cinema yeah. and I could watch both of them, I would kill, I would do anything to be able to watch something on that scale. Yeah. You know, but I just feel like 
it, as much as it must have been nice to watch something like that yeah. anywhere. Um, I, I, I think it has to be. I, I would have loved to have seen it in the IMAX. I would have loved to have seen, I mean, I saw the, the first, the 2014 Godzilla. I went to the, um, I went to the, uh, Basildon IMAX one, which is a pseudo yeah. IMAX experience where we yeah. saw Force Awakens. Um, yeah. Which was as good as it kind of got at the time, you know. It was, I couldn't get a big ticket for it and it wasn't out on the big IMAX screen. No, we went to um, see, uh, uh, Force Awakens on that, didn't we? And it was, yeah. It was, it was, it was, it, nice. it was okay. It did the job. It was all right. It was... Oh yeah. Definitely did the job. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, so I saw that first one there. I just saw the second one in, I think I saw it either in Odeon or in Everyman, one or the other, but I, I really enjoyed it. And these are cinema experiences. And I did feel a bit gutted that I didn't get to see this at a big screen first. Um, too, yeah. because some of it just would have looked amazing and the sheer visceral sounds coming from it. But it is ridiculous. It is kind of like a fight. And they do treat it in a Batman v Superman kind of way, in which, although it makes more sense, because these are animals, and they're literally yeah. just fighting because they both want to be the prime. And that's it. Yeah. You know, Godzilla goes after any other Titan because it's king. And once Kong comes from Skull Island... Godzilla's like, hang on, mate, what? <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Which, they've set that up in law since the first film. So, you know, as the legitimate reasons go, it's not over someone's mother's name or anything like that. It's it's simply because these are animals and they're fighting for territory of the planet. And they've, they've, this film has basically opened the floodgates for more Godzilla law to be made a reality. I think they've they've done it in a way where they've got something... And it works, not like the shitty Universal one, which had the mummy and they tried to make that crappy Frankenstein film and all these other ones don't really work together. I think these these work well in the way that they've done it, especially after Kong Skull Island being, to be honest, a much better film than some of these other ones. But um I think as a kind of, almost like a vehicle movie, that's a great spectacle and really enjoyable. It's It's a good film. It's definitely not a, um, oh, I'm trying to think, what's the film? It's definitely not a Pacific Rim 2. You'll get some people say it's an absolute shit film, but I would say, what's your reason for it? And if they start saying about there's no character development, the character people don't really do anything, I'm thinking, why are you going to watch two oversized creatures smashing each other in the face and demolishing buildings and looking for character growth? The character growth is they're trying not to die and get out of the way. <laughs> This is like a direct sequel to Godzilla King of the Monsters, isn't it? Um, in, in the sense that it kind of is, but in a sense that, yeah, it, it does link onto it. It's, it's a direct it's sequel. It's got the same actors in it. It's got, so, yeah, it? it's got the same actors. It's the same world. So it's, yeah, it's, so it, it's, it, it is a sequel of sorts. It's, but in the same way that a lot of the original films were, a lot of the films were sequels. Um, yeah. you know they kind of tie into each other. They build a world and these are the people in it. And some of them will come back, some of them won't. It depends on where the story is told in the world and whether they get involved. But because they've got this monarch company, these people will keep coming back. But, yeah, yeah, I know there's a thing that ties it all together. It's actually one of the more, I don't know if you'd call it successful, but... Uh, I, I think it would be. I would say that. Uh, I would say the way that they've done it works really well. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely one of the most... Um, uh, <laughs> ambitious. <laughs> well, from not ambitious. I'm just saying it's, <laughs> it's it's a continuation of movies in that sort of cinematic universe sense. I mean, I, yeah. I think they've probably done about as well as Warner Brothers had with theirs. Yeah. So yeah. Well, maybe say. that's a, maybe that's a little segue. That we well, Legendary do. is Warner Brothers, isn't it? I think as a subsidiary they're, they're or something. Like a, yeah, they're a sub studio. Or better, yeah. I think. yeah. So um, yeah, I think I, I'm hoping they do more. Still, I hope. Because they 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 seem quite proud of it as well. Because I've seen a couple of videos of um of like legendary. I follow them on Facebook, and they've been sharing fan art from the films and stuff, and having thank you videos for people supporting them all the way from Godzilla fourteen. And I'm thinking they've got some pride in this, which feels nice. You know, normally everyone's always ashamed of things that they've kind of made and looking to distance themselves, whereas they feel we we set out to try and do this. And the first film was a certain way, and the second film went full Godzilla. 
if if you really need like a crazy fucking spectacle, yeah, the second the second Godzilla King of the Monsters is good, and then if you've got time, follow it up. If you've got an evening in, like a couple of hours, have a beer. Yeah, second film. Yeah. And you want to know what a Godzilla film feels like? Watch that second one. Because I'm telling you, as a guy who grew up watching the guys in suits and stuff era, the, you know, Showa era and all that, and can kind of suspend belief, it's nice seeing something where the CG is so good that they can replicate these creatures without them looking like rubber suits. Like, Ghidorah in the second film is, is spot on. It's crazy how they've managed to make a free-headed space dragon, essentially, um, look like a creature as opposed to a big rubbery. <laughs> and I, I just, yeah. I'm just really impressed. Cool. Well, I think Godzilla anyway, King of the Monsters yeah. is on a uh, Sky Cinema, so I think yeah, I can it watch should be. That I've one. got it on. Yeah, I've got it on now. I've watched it like a few times since being at home and stuff. Sometimes I've had yes. it on in the background, like when I've been working. <laughs> Gotta have a monster fix. Gotta have a monster yeah, going on. I just on in stick the my head on time times. while I'm, you know, while I'm doing marketing stuff and building bits. I've got like, and, and another thing about it, about the embracing of, um, making it a more Godzilla thing. If you watch the first Godzilla film, it has a more, it has its own identity. Like Godzilla's got this weird military sort of beat, um, whenever it turns up. In the second film, they used the Toho version. Yeah, the actual Godzilla theme is the Japanese theme. It's oh, mental. You get so much out of this, don't you? I know. You know it's it bon- I know, but this is what I mean. It's crazy. It's like I, I left that cinema in disbelief. I literally, I, I was, I was grinning the same way that I saw Thanos at the end of the first Avengers film, and I think I even said the same thing. Where I just literally turned and went, "Crazy sons of bitches are actually doing this." <laughs> <laughs> cool. Um, so right, yeah, that's on I, the list then. I'm watching. Yeah. I'm watching Godzilla then next week. Yeah, I mean, like I said, think of it. I don't want to say it's nothing like the Fast and Furious films where they they're just like you know you go through one to the other to the other. It, it is a it is a big silly spectacle, but yeah, yeah, enjoy it. Similar to sort of Pacific Rim, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, no, it sounds good. I, and I'm guessing, I, 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 I don't really need to watch the first Godzilla film. I no. remember vaguely what happened. Yeah, he got you don't angry need to. and smashed up a load of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah. Okay, so let's try that segue again then. From okay. one Warner Brothers cinematic universe to another. Um, we, we basically, because um, there was a big fan petition uh, for to release the Snyder Cut, um, and also because there was lockdown and also because Warner Brothers decided to shift the emphasis onto their new streaming platform, HBO Max, um, we now have Zack Snyder's Justice League. And because because it has to be <laughs> the longest thing ever, because they have to shoot additional footage, because just to keep the fans at bay and to make them buy into it and to make them subscribe to HBO Max... It's four fucking hours long. Um, there's no way in hell, even if Zack Snyder had made this film and been seen it through to the end, there's no way in hell it would ever be four hours long. No. Unless they did a director's cut later. But he, they've only this has only been en- enabled by uh, Warner Brothers throwing S- Zack Snyder a bunch of money to finish yeah, the Yeah, 70 million or something like that. I yeah. think it was, yeah. So the overall reaction generally has been uh, positive um, in that yeah. uh, this seems that it seems that justice has been served. Justice. See what <laughs> I did there. Um, and I watched it and and then it ended and I was like, thank <laughs> fuck that's over. Um, wow. Quite honestly. Um, I mean, the thing I, the thing I dislike about it, right. And, and I'll let you have your say in a moment, is that, right, okay, so positives. Um, the cyborg character um, has a reason for being in the film. Yeah. Uh, he has a very quite tragic storyline, which is the core of it, which Zack Snyder, I think, was mentioned like ages ago, and which 
what might have been one of the many reasons that it stirred all the fanboys into a frenzy was that there was clearly a film yeah. on the cutting room floor here that, that was never going to see the light of day until now. Uh, so, yeah, that's good. Um, it looks great. Uh, the composition of a lot of the shots is great, although, annoyingly, you have to watch it all in a 4 by 3 ratio because it was supposed to be seen on an IMAX. But it yeah. never is going to be, ever. You know, unless they do do, unless they go release the Snyder Cut on IMAX fan petition. I think they will. So, so yeah, there's that. So, so yeah, so uh, and, there's, and there's a black and white version coming out as well, or it might already be out now. Oh wow! Um, so, so, so you have to watch it all in four by three. But my the thing that really annoys me, right, is that everyone's fucking superpower is slow motion. <laughs> there was a bit too much of it. I, I, yes, that's I, why I would it's agree. Four fucking hours long. I would agree on that. <laughs> You can Although, remove the slow some, motion some of the and slow-mo it would be half an hour long. Yeah. So, so there's that. And, um, and I just don't like the way that they make Batman just like this fucking, like, mech man who just has lots of fucking tanks and shit. Where, what part of that is like the world's greatest detective? I know. I'll just put a, I'll just blow it up with a fucking tank. I suppose you could argue that the stakes are raised somewhat in this story. Uh, yeah. You know, we're dealing with intergalactic threats, I suppose. Uh, yeah, that's the whole point, isn't it? I mean, this is just the fight Batman. He's not actually solving anything because everything just runs at him in the open. Or yeah. he just has to go towards it. i got to say, though, there are a couple of bits on there. Well, you mentioned the tank. I thought the inclusion of the um, Frank Miller tank was quite nice. Is that the, the really oversized? Yeah, that oh, was the that Frank Miller Bat- Dark Knight Returns tank. <laughs> that was oh, that was right. a nod to that. So um, I think that was purely the only reason why that was there, which is why it wasn't actually in motion. It was just still, wasn't it? When he was standing next to it. Um, yeah. Also, the Wonder Woman scene where she rescues the kids from the terrorist. I don't know if you've seen the difference in the cuts. Is you that know, the one where throws, the girl goes, the briefcase oh, bomb. I want to be like her. Yeah, I know. But she, that, that's... Iron po- signpost. Ugh. It's that, got that as much bit subtlety aside, as a lead I know. truck. But that bit aside, that scene was actually a lot more horrific. Yeah. Because the guy, the guy actually, um, in the original cut, he just shoots once with that assault rifle. And she blocks right. it. And then he shoots a few more times as she blocks it. Whereas in this one, he's actually trying to gun him down and reloads. Right, yeah, because you went um, through, you put yourself through a whole fucking year of this, didn't you? Watching the original <laughs> version. And... I didn't watch the original one of it of it yet. I've not done that. I didn't bother. Oh, that's um, well. So that's mad that you know that that you yeah, could make. That I remember that. Comparison. I remember that being a lot longer. And also, oh, right. um, I was just preparing myself for a very also the bit long where list of changes. Yeah, no, the bit where, um, she throws the case up in the air and you get the whole, you get the crazy slow mo as well for her launching the case up in the air. That's a bit different. Cause I think originally she just, uh, I think she just throws it from the ground up right. through the roof rather than jumping up and then launching it further. Um, right. I mean, but just little things like that. There's a lot of changes. There's yeah. a lot of new footage. The film hangs together a lot better, you know, it makes yeah. sense. There's a lot of stupid shit, like the thing at the end with that shit head as a joker. Fuck Jared <laughs> Leto, he's rubbish. And especially in this, because he's just doing a shit version of Heath Ledger. Um, and, and, and that apparently is the only new scene that they shot. Um, yeah, yeah, I don't know. It's... it. Uh, uh, I, I kind just... of I kind of enjoyed it because I I had the time and I just sat through it and was like okay it was a, it was quite long by the end of it it did feel like I'd watched the TV series in like when you binge a TV series that's in like three parts or something yeah. like that or four parts well they did split it up into chapters uh, to, that's, yeah, that's, that's one some of them were so longer did... than others weren't they so yeah and like, I mean one you of the could like, like if you oh. yeah if you didn't want to kind of get get it over with. You could, uh, sorry, I, 
I really just hate the way I, uh, I, I can't help just, just frame it. It's just the way I feel about it. But um, yeah, it's it, another thing I thought was this is the kind of film that could only be made and consumed in a pandemic. Yeah, true. In that, maybe it's it's it, 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 it's the only reason that that it got oh, made is because oh. HBO needed content for their streaming platform. Exactly, uh, it made which, the platform, didn't it? Yeah, and also it's the only film that you would have. It's the only time where you would likely have four hours to devote to a fucking a, four, a two four what, hour though? superhero there, film. Yeah, but there were a couple of things in it I did kind of prefer. I got to say. Um, the whole opening of it where they're mourning Superman, that wasn't so much a thing. And there was more of Lois, more yeah. of Lois and Superman's mom as well. There were more scenes of them just having like conversations and showing that no, they are actually genuinely mourning this character's loss, which was glossed over in the, in the original one. You didn't really get a sense of any of that. Well, um, no, because, because, because the mandate there was to, basically take what Zack Snyder had shot and pep it up a bit, make it, you know, whack in a few jokes, brighten yeah. up the colours and have something more in line with what's what the MCU is. I know. And that's why but everyone I, I, hated it. I, I didn't, yeah, but I didn't like, I, I didn't mind, I don't mind that approach, but I really didn't enjoy Justice League, the original version. I watched it at home no, in my own terrible. comfort. And I just thought, I don't know what I watched. It was just weird and rubbish. And the weird thing was, when I first saw Batman v Superman, I felt the same. And I think it's the problem is, it's the same thing with Batman v Superman. The original cut, theatrical cut, rubbish. For some reason, it doesn't work. It's just disjointed enough. Each of the scenes don't quite feel as though they carry the film together enough that you care by the time the end happens. Whereas... Annoyingly, the three hour cut, the little bits that I couldn't tell you what the differences were in that. I still can't. I've seen it, um, I've actually seen that three times now. Um, the, the ultimate theatrical, whatever, the ultimate cut. And it's a much better film apart from that one scene. If they remove that one scene and he just like, if they remove that one thing about why did you say her name and they just changed it so that Batman just has a change of heart. And then he just throws the spear away. That would be much better. It's like he regains his humanity and realizes he's going to become the villain. It's almost like, you know, you live, you live long enough to see yourself become the thing you hate, which would have been a nice hark back to the Nolan one. I think that would have been the better thing rather yeah. than the whole, why did you say that name? Rah, rah, rah. Yeah. Because there were, there were so many weird little things in, um, in Batman v Superman that, that made me think, were they kind of hinting at some of the Nolan verse? Like the fact that Wayne Manor was burned down. <laughs> yeah. And they were in this other place. Like whenever you saw it, it was burnt out and needed to be rebuilt. I was thinking, oh, it's, it's that, that was kind of interesting. It wasn't burned down in the same way as that film, but it was like a nice hint to that. Um, but I don't know. I just think that he needs to find a shorter way of telling stories because. Just don't I really so did enjoy it. I really, yeah, I really did enjoy it. I enjoyed Man of Steel. When I watched it again, everyone says, oh, Superman wouldn't let people die. And I watched it with the express purpose of seeing what the things were that people hated about Man of Steel. I mean, everyone was talking about the collateral damage and stuff. And I just realized when Superman gets the suit and becomes Superman, he's still kind of almost like Batman year one. He hasn't been Superman for very long. He's just been this guy going around doing odd things, working in cafes and stuff and, you know, getting pissed off at people and wrecking their trucks with telegraph poles, which was a direct reference to a comic. Pooh said, oh, Superman wouldn't do that. And I was like, apparently that's a reference to a comic where he did do that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and I just find it funny because people say that, oh, you know, he wouldn't have broke Zod's neck and stuff like that. He'd order the people in the buildings. He, he literally doesn't really know what he's doing. He's not the Superman that we know. No. You know, he is, he is literally like being Superman for a week, <laughs> if not a couple of days. And these people have turned up and he just knows he has to fight them. 
Yeah, I guess that's just the yeah, it's just a problem with the approach, I guess. Um, but that's the whole that was why I thought it was interesting because it was you know, it's kinda of like someone having an issue with Superman Red Sun, where there's a version of him that was raised by a Soviets and he's like a, a Soviet version of himself. I think you just think of it as an alternative. They've done so many versions of Superman. You've got the Kingdom Come version with a black and white uniform where he is literally just literally sees in black and white. You're either guilty or innocent. If you're guilty, you're dead. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's just, I just treat it as one of them. I think it comes from the comic book background, which makes me surprised when a lot of people have this very unable to see past, oh, it's a film. It's not the Christopher Reeve Donna version. I'm thinking, well, have you seen Superman 3 lately? That yeah. wasn't that great a film. I saw Superman 4 in the cinema. It was one of the first films I saw as a kid in the cinema, but it was one of the worst films probably made. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, it's, there's a lot of rose tinted glasses going on with things. And I think, I think you just need to accept it as a variation and that's it. Almost like Justice League Dark. That's what <laughs> I'm kind of doing. So I, I kind of give it a pass in that sense to say, well, it's, it's Snyder's. You know, we've had Nola's one, Nolan's one, which, has pissed off a lot of people. I wonder why Batman's voice has to be so gravelly in that. <laughs> um, there's so many things in that that make me kind of go, really? Like, come on, couldn't you make a stab proof suit? Really? Come on. Um, but then there's so much in there that makes me go, yes, this is brilliant. So I don't know. I think I'm just seeing them as differences. And I think I said in a post where I said to you, I'm, I'm kind of just seeing where they go and if they're okay and they get fixed, and just leave them where they are, because in five years' time, there's going to be a whole new set anyway. Someone will come along and say, I'm going to do a Batman film where he's... I'm going to do a Batman series where he's a detective, because everyone keeps seeing him punch people. I'm going to have him talk with Gordon, like Batman the Animated Series. I'm going to have him have a discussion with Gordon on the roof, going through evidence, analysing stuff. You know, it's yeah. it's bound to happen. But in the meantime, I don't know. I we've think, got I these. Think as far as their sort of connected stuff goes, I think that's all going to just exist on TV. Because I, they, they're actually, I mean, I, I don't watch any of it because I, I, I know I'm just, I don't know. Arrow was all right, but I don't watch any of it. Yeah, but apparently, it, they've managed to do a lot better job connecting things all together on their with their TV shows. They've done a lot of crossovers on there with the Arrow, they call it, yeah, the Arrowverse. I mean, I watched a lot of it at one point just because it was interesting seeing how it connected up and they were all cheesy sort of shows and stuff. And the guy who played Superman in Supergirl has now got his own series, um, Superman yeah. and Lois. Um, so they're kind of turning a lot of them off. Arrow's ended. Um, oh, is it? A few of them. Yeah. Arrow and Arrow finished. How many seasons um, did that go? I don't know. I didn't watch it all, to be honest. <laughs> I bet it's um, like 12 or so, some madness. Um, probably. But I just, I just feel Arrow lost its way a long time ago. They should have kept him kind of like the first season where he was a killer and it's just whether he chose to or not. So he always had the option. I think taking that away made him a bit, a bit less. Eight seasons. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I think I watched maybe the first two. Yeah. Um, the whole Deathstroke thing was great. I like that. You got the Aussie guy from um uh from uh what's the gladiator thing? With uh Spartacus. You had the Aussie guy from Spartacus uh, in oh, there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I definitely yeah. saw him in it, yeah. Yeah. Deathstroke when he murdered Oliver's mother, that shocked me. I was not expecting that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> I yeah. Just, I, I don't know like, if I, oh, wow. I don't know if I got that far. No. But that 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 to me made me kind of keep watching because I thought oh what are they going to do next and then they kind of petered it out and it turned into the whole relationship thing and whenever that happens on the show that's when it starts to go on a slow burner when they find their one and they become the couple and then they have to do the drama of a relationship whilst all of the things are going on in the world and it's a bit like okay come on you're not the only people to have ever done this um but anyway yeah I don't know I just I found I find it interesting I thought the, the Snyder Cut was... I thought it needed to happen. I thought four hours was completely indulgent. But then if they said to you, come back, do what you need to do, and all of the fans will watch things, we'll give you a platform to put it on, wouldn't you do that? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's sort of like... It's, it's the Death Stranding of, of... It's his Death Stranding, isn't it? Uh, 
he's like that guy Hideo Kojima Sony gave him all the money in the world and he went well I'm going to make whatever I want um, and they've kind of done that so my issue with it is that I I, I worry that um, studios are like pandering to audiences too much uh, I feel like it's filling audiences with a sense of entitlement but at the same time I sort of feel like uh Things just went a certain way. Uh, an opportunity presented itself. Snyder got to, uh, you know, present the version of the film that he had in his head. And I think I, a lot I of would fans love, are happy with that. It's just I would there love are a, to see. Yeah, I would love to see the same thing happen with. I don't know if if technology gets good enough that we can have people CG'd and they don't look janky. I would love to see the original Donna Cut version of Superman, the Christopher Lee one. Christopher, what, yeah, Christopher what, Lee. Was that because was that supposedly edited? No, to Christopher fuck Reeves. Up? Well, no, because that's what Man of Steel essentially was. Um, Superman one and two were supposed to be one film. Right. So the whole idea of General Zod and everything else in the first film and stuff, but then they got split, which is why the first film has a lot of great stuff at the beginning, and then it kind of peters out a little bit. And I don't even remember who the villain was in the first... It's just really the helicopter save and a few bits, isn't it, in the first uh, Superman film? It's been film. so long since I've seen it. Yeah, I, don't, I, know. I only I've, remember I've, little parts. I've, Maybe I yeah, need to I've got it on DMD. But they, they've got an extra bit, and it's like apparently there's um, a couple of bits of pieces where special effects weren't there and stuff. And if you watch the fight in Superman 2 as well... Considering the era it was made, I think it was still the seventies or something. He does fight in the middle of the street. He fights three superpowered beings in the middle of the street. They're picking up petrol tankers and blowing them up and throwing buses load of people at each other. It's just that back then you wouldn't have had those people get hurt and murdered. He gets thrown into the Empire State Building spire and it it falls off. You know, it's there's collateral damage. It's just the scale. But I, I would like to see like a cut of it where they can fill in the bits as well because there's like storyboards and other bits and pieces on there and like a special edition version of the first Superman film. So I, I, I think that would be quite interesting, just just as an extra or something on there. Cool. But anyway, yeah, we've talked about this enough. <laughs> Thanks for listening to the Not Watching Podcast, part of the Not Listening Podcast Network where you can also find the Not Playing podcast, where we talk about video games, and the Not Listening podcast, where you can hear Adam and Co. talk about all kinds of nonsensical nonsense. You can email us at notwatchingpodcast at gmail.com, or you can tweet out or follow us on Twitter at notwatchingpod. You can find the show notes for all our shows at notlistening.co.uk, and if you like what you've heard here, please do leave us a review. Anyway, that's all for now. Until next time, stay safe out there.